In this video, we're going to cover the Third Crusade, the triumph of Richard the Lionheart, as well as the salvation of the Kingdom of Jerusalem. I'm following history, and this video is part 4 in a series on the history of the Kingdom of Jerusalem. If you haven't seen the other parts, click on the card in the right corner to view the whole playlist. Otherwise, stay tuned. Following the devastating defeat at the Teen in 1187, the cities of the Kingdom of Jerusalem, not able to expect any military assistance, fell to the Saracens like domino bricks. The only city to stand were Tyre, which only managed to stand due to a crusader noble named Conrad of Montferrat arriving in the port. Conrad quickly took control over the city's defenses, refusing to surrender its walls to Saladin. His bravado was followed by the Pope, calling for a new crusade, imposing a seven-year-long truce throughout Europe, so that rulers could concentrate their efforts to liberate the Holy Land. The call was answered with three of Europe's most powerful monarchs taking up the cross with the first one setting out being the Holy Roman Emperor Frederick Barbarossa. By this time a 70 year old man, Frederick was a veteran from the Second Crusade and his campaign to retake the Holy Land marked the peak of a long and prosperous reign. Unfortunately, due to drowning in a river in Anatolia, he never made it to the Levant, and without their leader, most of the German crusaders made a decision to return to Europe. Back in Palestine, the king of Jerusalem, Guy de Lusignan, was released by Saladin after having been captured at Athene. Finding himself as a king without much of a kingdom, Guy quickly got into conflict with Conrad, who had declared himself the Lord of Tyre, and who refused Guy's kingship. With only a small force at his command, Guy in year 1189 made a move that was as military futile as it was politically brilliant. He marched to the port city of Acre and besieged it with the help of a Genoese fleet that joined in later the same year. While not having any chance to capture the city with his meager numbers, his actions cost him as a true king of Jerusalem, fighting its enemies while trying to recover a Christian city. As a result, many eager and zealous groups of crusaders arriving in Palestine quickly joined his camp, until the small expeditionary force had grown into an army, and with its growth, Guy's prestige rose to the point where Conrad for a short while were forced to acknowledge him as the king of Jerusalem, even though the two men would continue to have a tense relationship throughout both of their lives. During the siege, King Guy was greeted by two other kings who similarly to Emperor Frederick had answered the call of the Third Crusade. In 1191, King Philip of France and Richard the Lionheart of England arrived by ship with their crusader forces near Acre. Guy's siege had by this time grown into a large affair with the city completely invested and Saladin's troops hovering outside. After launching an unsuccessful attack on the city, Acre's by now desperate defenders surrendered the city to the crusaders. With Acre in Christian hands, Richard and Philip tried to solve the conflict that had sprung up between Guy and Conrad by declaring that Guy would remain king as long as he lived, with the crown going to Conrad and his heirs upon Guy's death. Conrad, being angry with the decision, returned to Tyre, refusing to assist the crusaders any further. Shortly after the capture of Acre, King Philip left the crusade and sailed back to France. Since before the start of the First Crusade, Richard and Philip had been in conflict with each other due to conflicting interests back in France, and after their arrival in Palestine, it was clear that it was Richard who was seen by most crusaders as a true leader of the Third Crusade. Not willing to be seen as number two, Philip made the decision to leave, likely with the intention to move against Richard's lands in France, while Richard was preoccupied in the Holy Land. With Richard as the only European king commanding the crusader forces, he made a decision to march south towards the port city of Jaffa, due to the march along the coast having the safest supply lines. 
However, it was still a dangerous journey as the Christian armies constantly were tailed by Saladin, harassing the Crusaders with his light cavalry and hoping for the Crusaders to make mistakes he could capitalize on. As a testament to Richard's skills as a commander, none were made. The army kept a tight marching formation and refused to chase after the Saracens when being harassed. Saladin becoming increasingly pressured from his emirs to launch an all-out attack on the Christian forces, attack the crusaders north of the city of Arsuf, with Richard being well prepared for it. The battle was a triumph for the crusaders, with the Saracens taking huge losses and Saladin's prestige from Atene being shattered. Following the battle, Jaffa fell into Christian hands, leaving Richard with a bit of a dilemma. Most of his army desired to march to Jerusalem and recapture the city. It was a dangerous march through territory controlled by Saladin, and if the Christians managed to capture the city, there was a risk that most crusaders would return to Europe, without any possibility for the native lords to defend the conquered lands. Upon consideration, Richard decided to march towards Jerusalem, while at the same time sending out a smaller force south to capture the city of Ascalon. With Saladin being unable to defend both cities, he abandoned Ascalon in favor of heavily harassing the Crusader army marching towards Jerusalem, as well as its supply lines. The strategy was a success with the crusaders deciding to forgo besieging the city due to the risk of doing so being too high and the army retreated to Ascalon. With the attempt to capture Jerusalem being a failure, there was a lot of disappointment among the Christian forces. On top of that were the tensions between Guy and Conrad once again growing. Following the failed attempt at taking Jerusalem, Conrad decided to refuse to assist an army associated with King Guy, and in addition were Conrad enjoying much support among the native lords in the Levant. It seemed likely a civil war would break out for the throne of Jerusalem when Richard returned to Europe. To once and for all heal these divisions, Guy were forced to abdicate and were instead crowned as the king of Cyprus as a consolidation prize, with Conrad being installed as the king of Jerusalem. The compromise resolved the tensions among the Christian forces, and many of the crusaders once again urged Richard to make another attempt to conquer Jerusalem, and Richard once again were forced to march on the holy city. Realizing that an attempt to besiege Jerusalem were doomed to fail, Richard found himself in a tricky situation. If the siege failed, the Christian army were left to the mercy of the Saracens, and if the siege succeeded, Saladin could easily cut it off from the coast and recapture it. Left with little alternative, King Richard made a truce with Saladin, whose forces were eager to see the war come to an end. In October 1192, a three year long period of peace was agreed upon. The Kingdom of Jerusalem were allowed to keep their conquered coast between Tyre and Jaffa, and Christian pilgrims were permitted to travel freely throughout Palestine, including Jerusalem. Following the truce, Richard boarded a vessel and returned home. Despite its failures, the Third Crusade was a success. It saved the Kingdom of Jerusalem by restoring its coastal cities, as well as healing its internal divisions. Had the Crusade continued a bit longer, Richard may even have managed to take Jerusalem, since only three weeks after his departure, Saladin died, and without him, his empire in Egypt and Palestine fell apart. Today, I hope you learned something new about the Third Crusade, as well as about history of the Kingdom of Jerusalem. And don't forget that if you like this video, smash that subscribe button, as well as the bell icon, so you don't miss anything.